I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the Geneva Summit and the 25 partner organizations for granting me this invaluable opportunity to address you today. The significance of this moment is not lost on me as it comes on the heels of a personal ordeal that unfolded merely 90 days ago. I found myself subjected to arbitrary arrest in one of Latin America's most dehumanizing prisons under conditions I am not yet prepared to describe publicly. Since protests first broke out in Nicaragua on April 2018, Danilo Ortega and his wife Rosario Murillo have gradually dismantled all civil society and political rights as part of their absolute control of the state apparatus. The legislature has declared illegal, close, or expelled from the country more than 3,000 NGOs, including 20 universities and including the Red Cross. More than 20 universities have been shut down in Nicaragua and close to 15% of the population since 2018 has been forced into exile. Thousands of human rights defenders, journalists, student leaders, religious figures as well. On June 8, 2021, the Daniel Ortega regime in Nicaragua unjustly charged me with treason, an accusation that led to my subsequent sentence into 13 years in prison. The sole basis of this conviction was my public statements during my presidential campaign. That's what they showed as evidence of my crimes to undermine national integrity. They also show as proof of my treason my testimonies at the UN Security Council, at the UN Human Rights Council, and my testimonies at the European Parliament. I spent 611 days in prison, the, fourth, uh, the first 84 days in that, uh, of that time I was legally disappeared. They didn't even acknowledge that I was in prison. And I'd like to take here a minute to honor and thank the relentless work of my wife, Berta Valle, for being an advocate of my freedom. As I uh, tell Evgenia, when I see her work, her job and her passion, we can see what the power of love can do when it joins together with your compassion, with your work, with organizations such as Geneva Summit. So we will see Vladimir free. That's my belief. My experience, regrettably, is not isolated uh, from the rest of the world. It's a rather uh, grim reflection of a larger, disheartening reality. Countless dissidents around the globe find themselves in similar circumstances, including Monsignor Rolando Alvarez, the Catholic Bishop of Mayan Diocese, Vladimir Karamursa from Russia, Geoffrey Shong from China, just to mention a few. The utilization of incarceration as a tool of repression has become a distressing global epidemic. During my tenure as a head of disarmament office in Nicaragua, I gained a first-hand experience of the devastating consequences of war. And one of the most horrifying effects I witnessed was the mutilation of countless individuals who had lost their limbs due to anti-personal landmines. Rather than being designed for killing, these landmines were specifically crafted to inflict grievous harm and immense pain upon the enemy. The deliberate mutilation of combatants by these landmines served to demoralize troops and to create permanent harm in the form of injured veterans much longer after the war. I draw this analogy of personal land, anti personal landmines because modern tyrants are employing a similar perverse logic through arbitrary imprisonment. Instead of outright murdering their adversaries, they chose to incarcerate them and subject them to false trials. By imprisoning their opponents, these dictators forced dissidents' movements to focus primarily on securing the release of prisoners, often diverting attention from broader long-term issues such as restoration of democratic institutions, justice, equality, education, were all forced as dissidents to focus on the release of political prisoners. But also, political imprisonment, as my own family knows, as my daughter Alejandra, who I last saw when she was six years old, and I was deprived from seeing my daughter Alejandra for three years, not a single letter, not a single phone call, not even a drawing for my daughter Alejandra, not even the, the uh, access to a Bible, no reading materials, no drinking water, even a glass of water had to be asked to the officers every single day. My family was forced to go every single day to the prison with my drinking water 
If, that, if my sister wouldn't show there a day, I wouldn't have water that particular day. So the suffering that these regimes cause is a global epidemic. Urgency permeates our plea as we ask the international community to adopt more effective instruments within the framework of international law. These instruments must serve to safeguard human rights defenders and dissidents from failing victims of arbitrary imprisonment. I am here today proposing a new international convention that elevates to the category of crime against humanity the imprisonment of people for the simple fact of expressing their ideas of Vladimir is doing or has done over the past, for exercising political options, as it was my case, or simply because of their faith, their religion, or simply because they belong to an ethnic or demographic group. Let's say very clear, the available instruments have proven to be ineffective. We need, we need a new international treaty. So as it happened with the Ottawa Convention, which was the result of a massive international movement, a convention that was able to declare anti-personal uh, landmines illegal through the work of civil society, we can do the same. I invite the Geneva Summit and their partners to launch that initiative. In the case of Nicaragua, Monsignor Alvarez is under arbitrary arrest and sentenced to 26 years in prison. I don't know of any other Latin American country where a leader of a religion is in prison just because worship or preaching peace, nonviolence, and justice from the pulpit of his church. This is, I insist, a global epidemic. Together, we can forge a path towards a future where the basic rights and freedoms of individuals are upheld, where dissenting voices are celebrated rather than silenced, and where the darkness of injustice is replaced by the radiance of hope. Thank you. Thank you, Felix, for your powerful words. Just seeing you here free is inspiring. Um, your wife fought for you here just a year ago. You're free. You got out and you came here. It really means a lot and it gives hope to others who are fighting for the release of their family members.